Hey everybody, Mark Edward Lewis here from Cinema Sound. Uh, we're going to be looking at yet another aspect of how to put music into your film, how to make music for a film. Uh, this is the third in our series of how to get the in-the-box orchestra sounds to sound more real. And this is probably the most important video in those three. We're going to look at how to add reverb and how to place uh, sample players on stage so that they sound real. Let's roll. All right, we're here in Logic Pro X, and I've got a little clip here from my pilot Blade of Honor, just a little, uh, you know, if you haven't seen any of the other clips, then this will be new to you. If you have, it'll be old because we've been using this same clip. Check it out. So lots and lots of stuff. But as you can hear, uh, although there's lots of, you know, individual elements, and of course, if you look at our track count here in the orchestral layout, we've got, you know, everything pretty much in score order and all, as well as all the hybrid elements. But let's take a look at what happens if we don't add reverb to any of this. If we don't actually take into account that these instruments are actually on a stage. I'm going to take away the hall reverb that we have. Uh, which is here. We're just going to mute this for a second and play it once again. And you can tell that for an action cue, maybe that's not the end of the world. Maybe that's a uh, maybe that's a pretty good idea. But for realism's sake, and especially if you're trying to create a really big scape, a uh, big soundscape. Killing off your hall is not the right answer. Maybe shortening the hall, maybe doing something else, but um, you know we don't really ever want to kill off the hall sound because it does a beautiful job of blending samples together. In the real world, if we were doing a real orchestra, yeah, we don't probably want to add a hall for the multimedia distribution, like the actual theatrical or the DVD, you know, the final mix. For the score, of course, we would this, you know, music for music's sake. But with samples, because of how they work and don't work, more importantly, it's important for us to be able to have that hall in there, even if it's a little bit. But there's another element to this that's far more important. I'm going to pull up here our Cinebrass horn sample. And in another video, we talked about how important it is to do EQ to emulate where players are in the room. And you can see I've got a nice little uh, 450 hertz uh, EQ down here. We definitely don't like any of that oh, sound, so I'm just rolling it off. Nothing wrong with the sample itself. It's just more than we really want to have. Um, okay, so I've got the room set up here. Let's actually go to the legato side. Okay, now let's take a look at the close, and that means microphones that are right up on top of the French horns, not out in the room at all. And we're also going to turn off that hall. So that's, you know, it, it's kind of really, really stale. Kind of doesn't work. And even if we add a nice big hall to it, which is what most people do. It sort of sounds like samples in a room. I mean, samples in a hall. It doesn't really give us much realism. Even though the sample's pretty good. And if we do it the other way, though, we turn off the hall and we bring back the stage sound, it makes a big difference. Now, how am I bringing back the stage sound? Well, you could add your own stage reverb if the only samples you had were, you know, had been sampled in a, in a dry room. In this case, though, the Cinebrass and many of these Cine samples, well, in fact, all the Cinema sa Cine samples, have recordings of the room baked in to the samples themselves. So I'm going to turn down close and I'm going to turn up room. Now these microphones are out in the room where the audience would be. So you're going to get a little bit of the hall, but you're going to get a lot of that stage. Mm -hmm. 
Super cool. Now compare that to, again, the close. And you can actually, with Cine samples, you can add a clever blend of many microphones into a nice uh, Dennis Sands mix. which is what I use all the time. And then when we add this with a nice big hall, which in this case happens to be quantum leap spaces, and I'll show you why that's important. It's a pretty nice combination, having that stage which is again, in this case, built into the samples and the hall built in. Now notice what I have for these hall settings. The biggest thing, uh, this is a preset. You can get this when you buy Quantum Leak Spaces. This is version one space, so you can get it really cheap on Amazon. This is the Southern California Hall Full Orchestra, uh, whatever that TS means, front speakers and the three and a half millis, three and a half second. I've got it fully wet and this is a bus that all the tracks can go to. No dry signal, but this is the most important part. The 30 odd millisecond pre-delay. If I pull this down to zero, this reverb that was so nice now kind of gets in our way. It's sort of all over those attacks, but if I give it a little bit of a pre-delay, which allows the reverb to, well, it allows the original signal to go for a bit before the reverb comes in. as opposed to no. So we definitely want to add that pre-delay into our hall. Uh, just double check that it's there. Now with a sound like this, where it's got beautiful recording of, you know, a really beautiful recording of the rooms that these instruments are recorded in, it makes it life pretty easy. I mean, you just basically, you know, turn up the samples with the, with the microphones in the room and you've got at least that stage. And the reason we want that stage is because in real life, that's what you'd have. The sound would happen on the stage first and then it would come out into the room and that's the most real thing we can do. But what if you don't have samples like that? This is the Vienna uh, eight horn ensemble, which has a, a, a much more lovely uh, kind of, even tone than that brash, you know, 12, to uh, 12 horn thing, which we use all the time. We use all them all the time. But here's what this sounds like. Notice I've got a quantum leap spaces on the channel itself and an EQ. So um, let's see why that is. We're going to turn off the hall. We're going to turn off the space. Let's hear this horn by itself. Let's turn it up a little bit too. Well, it's pretty dry. It's a lovely sound, much more mellow, you know, and for actually probably for Yoda's theme might be a better sound. Um, but it, ha it completely lacks spatial realism. It's not in the place in terms of where it is in the room. And if we just add that hall back in. Beautiful hall, beautiful horn sample, but doesn't sound like it's actually there. It just sounds like we added it in the studio, which is exactly what we did. But there is no sample choice here for microphones that were in the room. So we're stuck with this. What do we do? Well, this is where we add in channel, not on a bus, because we want this to be unique to this sound, a, a, a reverb. And you can see what I'm using here is the Acme Storage ATS-F front speakers half second at no pre-delay with full wet signal. And it basically creates a French horn, which is, by the way, they all the sound emanator of the French horn is always turned around and goes behind you. So it's even darker. You have to really darken a French horn sample to make it sound like it's real or have it really bounce off a wall in a room, which is what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. 
So that's, that's, it's really, I mean, it's predominantly, I wouldn't say predominantly, maybe 50% that reverb. And it's a very nice reverb again, version one. No pre-delay. Why no pre-delay? We just said how important it was. Well, for a hall, it is. Because, it, you know, a hall is hundreds of feet deep. But as a stage is only dozens of feet deep. And you wouldn't want a delay to occur for the stage. Now, we could. We could try this. And I'm experimenting with this. Let's put this in that 30 zone again. It kind of, in this case, drowns it even further. And, of course, delays what really should be a very short and snappy sounding reverb. So we're going to keep this on zero. We're going to add back in the hall. And it ends up being all right. I'm going to give you one more example, and thanks for watching this long. If you've, probably, if you've enjoyed this, thank you for subscribing. This is the Vienna clarinet, which, you know, has its problems, but I like it for certain passages. Let's just listen to it without any reverb straight out of the box. Which is fine, but let's add the hall to it. Again, quantum leap spaces, the same setting, no pre-delay, no big deal. And then with the hall. And then let's just turn off the quantum leap spaces here for a second so you can hear that difference. doesn't quite have it you got to have that space in there the, the 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 stage and that makes a big difference obviously it's a massive you know hall sound and you, for a slower cue you'd probably want to use that for a big action cue you probably want to shorten it down but hopefully this gives you a sense of how to create that spatialness of having the instruments, you know, not just adding a hall, but where do they go in the hall? How far back do they go? And the more of that stage you add, and as we talked about in another video, EQ, the more of that high frequency roll off you add, um, the more real you're going to have. And the uh, more realism you're going to have. And the strings typically don't have, they have very little stage. In fact, let's just take a listen here since you're still watching. And again, thank you for subscribing. We're going to go pull up, oh, let's see, those are buses. Where's my violins? Here they are, just here. Uh, let's see. You hear all the high frequencies, all the nuance of the bows on the strings. We want to leave that stuff in. You know, it's lovely. Not that it's not lovely anywhere else, but you can see I don't have any, any reverb here, just the hall reverb. And if we look at the contact patch itself, which is true legato here, I'm just using the, the mics that uh, Dennis Sands, whose ears I would trust, um, he, he wants, I would, I would not use the dry just because it does get a little grungy, a little grainy. Oh, this, you know, I, this is second violins. That's why they're way over there. That's a little weird. There we go. Let's load up the spot. It's a little grainy. I like it, but it's grainy. I'd much rather have this. And there you go. Hopefully this has been useful to you. And if so, please do subscribe to our channel here. We have hundreds of videos here on the Cinema Sound YouTube channel and even more blog posts and videos and articles at cinemasound.com, which we hope you come and visit us. 
Uh, we also have the world's only 85-hour fully comprehensive education to show you how to get from, I don't know how to do audio for film and picture or multimedia, all the way to Hollywood-level immersion 3D audio deliverables for your production. And that's available for you at cinemasound.com. Come visit us. Until then, we'll see you in post. Even if you're